like all of us, I'm sad to see Mark go to an American jail. And we know we're going to get him back here soon. Hey, what's up? It's Dr. Like a lot of Pussy Foreskin Radio. And uh, today there was actually a rally happening at the Vancouver Art Gallery that you might have heard earlier or you could hear on our uh, podcast, www.foreskinradio.com. And uh, today I'm joined here by one of Vancouver's uh, top most best politicians. Please give it up for Mark Emery. Hey, politician, don't usually get introduced with that, but hello, everyone. I'm leader of the BC Marijuana Party, actually, and I've run for office 12 times since 1980, so I definitely guess I'm a politician. Excellent. So um, let us know a little bit about you, Mark, because I know a little bit, but I want to hear it from your own words. Well, I've been an advocate uh, for change of, of some vocal nature for 30 years now. I started doing tax revolts in the early 1980s, starting in 1980, actually, after I read Ayn Rand, and smoke marijuana. Same, those two pivotal events in my life happened about 30 years ago, and I've been on a real tear since. Now, I've only been an activist for marijuana legalization and the repeal of prohibition for 20 years. But in that time, we uh, gave away $4 million through, uh, when we raised money through our Overgrowing the Government campaign, which was selling seeds to people and hoping they grew lots of marijuana plants and they'd send us the money for those seeds and we'd give it away to people all over the world. And we did. We gave out $4 million to U.S., Canadian, worldwide activist groups. And then the DEA got wind of that, didn't like either part of the program, the raising money to overgrow the government, nor the uh, planting of all that marijuana. So they basically had me arrested here in Canada and have been seeking my extradition for the last four years. And now push comes to shove, the other shoe has finally dropped, as it were, and now I am going to be jailed on September 28th, Monday, uh, and then sent to a U.S. court in Seattle to be sentenced to a federal penitentiary, a sentence of five years. So if I don't get transferred back to Canada, which normally is automatic between Canada and the Americans, but uh, the conservatives aren't taking the weed prisoners back. So if I don't get transferred right away, um, I'll languish there for the whole five years. Uh, and so as soon as I get back to Canada, after 10 months, I'd be on day parole and 20 months full parole. So that's what I'd like, obviously, to have happen. So, you know, I'm hoping my Canadian supporters and and admirers can do what they can to lobby to get me back to Canada on a prison transfer. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I was <coughs> curious myself, and I know that, like, um, what I'm, I already know the answer to the question I'm about to ask, but you don't have to be, like, a pot smoker, per se, to support the uh, Marijuana Party, right? BC Marijuana Party. Oh, well, of course not. In fact, we got 54,000 votes in our first election in 2001, and a lot of that was seen because we were seen as a pro-freedom party, freedom mm-hmm. of choice party. And certainly the BC Marijuana Party has never advocated any kind of restrictive or exclusive kind of legislation that punishes one group and favors another. We think all enti- humans are entitled to autonomy, freedom, freedom of choice of their mind, of their body, of association. And sometimes freedom of choice is messy, but it's always at least fair and just. Mm-hmm. And that's what's really important about a social system is that it be fair and just. And so, you know, a lot of people are seeing this as a sovereignty issue. Like, it's a matter of why is Canada giving up a citizen to the United States criminal justice system, which has been shown to be ineffective, cruel, and barbarous, and yet giving me up while collecting taxes as a seed vendor, while having five mm-hmm. neighbors who've been selling seeds. Well, typically no one else ever gets arrested or charged for selling seeds in any way, capacity whatsoever. And I I only myself got fined uh, $2,000 in 1998 and $500 in 1997 for selling seats and then they stopped charging us and they showed no more interest and in fact the government started getting like ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a month in income taxes from my sales as a seed vendor so they were everybody was making money everybody knew what was going on nobody ever refused any of that $4 million I gave away which included many politicians and advocacy groups drug addiction clinics so you know I'm really proud of what I did but uh, it's come to this point that I have to go to jail for a five year sentence I think it's bullshit that you're actually going to be having to go to a jail that's outside of your country Yes, and, and quite worse. Unfortunately, the jail I'll be going for is one for aliens. So that is, non-Americans put in the U.S. federal criminal system are all clumped together. So there'll be about 10 Canadians with about 1,000 Mexicans, Guatemalans, Hondurans, Central Americans. Normally, that wouldn't be a problem, but a lot of the cartel employees and gang members are in those very prisons that I'm going to be sent to as an alien. So the, the prisons are typically locked down an awful lot, and the Canadians are not happy at all there, and they want to get transferred back to Canada, but the Conservative government hasn't been transferring uh, the weed convicts, weed prisoners, smugglers mostly, people who get caught smuggling pot to the United States end up in these jails, <coughs> and they're not. the Conservative government's not taking them back. So 
there needs to be a lot of lobbying done to get them back, and prison transfers are taking much longer than they used to. They're averaging 14 months to be transferred back. They used to take only four to six months. Now they're taking 14 months. So if Why did I decide to change? Sorry to interrupt The you. conservatives are just obstructing a lot of prison transfers. Oh, God. And so that's the problem. And the liberals, it was a more non-political thing. It was just automatic. They would mm-hmm. get transferred as soon as the paperwork was finalized. I got a question. Um, does this this effectively makes you a um, political prisoner, does it? Well, it's all political because no crime should be called such a thing unless there's a victim, unless someone shows some palpable harm. And there's nobody's complaining I harm. In fact, thousands of people would send testimonials and have sent testimonials to the judge already saying that I've made an incredible impact on their lives for the better. In some cases, people saying I saved their life or rescued their life. I mean, I've done a lot of things in 30 years, and we gave money away to a lot of really good groups. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have lots of great things to say. There are no people with any negative experiences. You know, I haven't hurt anybody. There are no victims here. You know, I paid all my taxes. I was totally upfront, was never secretive, nothing sinister going on. Led obvious political movements, clearly spent all my money in, in the political ways that I articulated. So there's a lot of transparency here. There's a lot of honesty. There's no victim. There's only a crime against the state. And what's the crime against the state? Well, it's basically dissent. It's disagreeing with the U.S. Because after all, every American citizen I dealt with was happy to have what I was giving them. And under their Declaration of Independence, they're entitled to their pursuit of happiness. And I certainly helped them pursue their happiness in a safe way. Nobody died or got hurt as a consequence of anything I did with them. So, you know, the U.S. government's a bit bent out of shape in its DEA, and of course the head of DEA went out of her way when I was arrested to say it was all about my legalization efforts. She didn't point to any victims or anybody who's been victim. She just said Mark Emery, who's given hundreds of thousands of dollars to legalization groups, Mark Emery, who founded legalization group, Mark Emery and his propagandist marijuana magazine, Cannabis Culture. Imagine the government of the United States calling my magazine a propagandist magazine. Woo-wee! That's when you're really blowing the big lie to huge proportions. So, you know, clearly they have, you, and they called me, what, the top, one of the top 50 most wanted in the world, and the number one most wanted in all of Canada, bigger than any other gang. So, you can see that they are mad with the power, that they have, like, totally hyper verbalize the situation because they've got a manic kind of obsession with me. Do, uh, do, do you have a chance to win in court uh, when you go to Seattle? Is that a possibility? Well, there's no trials. It's just sentencing. So I'm making oh. a plea agreement uh, because it was either 50 years next year or five years this year type of thing. And, and so, you know, they were threatening me. The, the, by saying I was the top 50 most well in the world, they're not looking for at the low end of the sentences. And the sentences themselves all have mandatory minimums attached to them, like five years each on distribution and manufacturing, then 10 years on money loans, so that'd be 20 years. And if they're saying I'm the most, you know, biggest marijuana producer in the history of the U.S. criminal justice system, which is what they're saying, well, that doesn't mitigate at the low end of things. That mitigates at the high end of things. So then that's like 30, 40, 50 years. Well, you know, at, at age 52, that's all a death sentence on the install. Plan. So this way, if I can get transferred back to Canada, even in the average of 14 months for a prison transfer, I'll be out on day parole as soon as I get here, right? And so the more lobbying by Canadians, the sooner that will happen. Thank you.